On Thursday, I bought you guys these two ideas for one page weeklies. But today, I want to give you guys some more. Hello again, team. It's Jess or Jashi Karin, and welcome back from my video on one page weeklies. Today, I'm going to be setting up six different styles of one page weeklies that you guys could try. But before we get into that, I figured we'd just have a flip through of my old journals and see what styles of one page weeklies I've used. So jumping back into my first bullet journal, one of the first examples I have of a one page weekly is this one here. And really the only reason it's a one page weekly is because I wanted to have the entire of November before my December pages. So I have the last three days of November, which were Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, here on this page. That's certainly one of the main reasons that I'll use a one page weekly because I want to have all of the days from one month together and without the days from either the next or the prior month. So of course for this one, this was for November, so when it came to December, I did a similar thing as well. Of course this probably isn't what comes to mind when you're thinking one page weekly. You're probably thinking a full week on one page. Which brings us to our second reason for me using a one page weekly, which is the holidays. Typically speaking, during the holidays, I don't have as many things to record. So I will drop down to a one page weekly. This spread here goes across two weeks. So the week of the 12th to the 18th, and then the 19th to the 25th. I had my to-do list section down the bottom here, and then just a smaller section for my events. Along with that, I gave myself a tracking section and a mini calendar. In my second bullet journal, we have a layout that's a little bit odd because it doesn't start on a Monday, it starts on a Saturday. But again, it is a one page weekly. For this one, I obviously didn't have a lot of tasks going on because I didn't write any of those down. But I had a section for my dinners and events and then my school classes. In October, I then had another one page weekly. So we have one week here, one week there. And so I have a section for events down the middle along with the mini calendars and then my to-do lists on the side. In December, because I was back on holidays, here's another one page weekly. Although I didn't end up actually labeling it, each of these rows is a day of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Another two one page weeklies. So you can kind of see the trend here that I prefer to have one column which is dedicated to events and another that's dedicated to a running to-do list. On to January in my third bullet journal. So again, we have the events section and a running to-do list. On this one, I also wrote down my dinners for the week. Another two one page weeklies, because again, I was on holidays. For this one, instead of just having the dinners, I had a full meal log with a smaller event section and then my running to do list. Over here, similar again, but we just changed up the layout. So we have events, meal log and to do's. Another one in May. So instead of having each of the days of the week section out, I had more of what's I think called an Alistair method where you have the days of the week up the top here and then you just put a dot under the corresponding day of the week for that event. And of course my running to-do list. And sometimes I'll just use that Alistair method for my entire weekly. So putting all of my tasks and events together in one running column. For this one page weekly in my fourth bullet journal, I split the page into three columns instead of just two. So I had mini calendar, events, and then two sections for a to-do list because I had a lot to get done. This part over here wasn't actually part of my weekly, but I wanted to make it look like it matched. Another one page weekly and one that I... It's not that I didn't like it, it's just I wanted more space to write, even though I didn't have a lot going on. For the later half of this week I was in Melbourne, which is why I didn't really need a lot of space, but I wouldn't use this on a typical week. Although it wasn't really a one page weekly, I also wanted to show you guys October because technically each of these are on Dutch doors. So if you had the full page, they could be a one page weekly. It would just be separating the page into six equal boxes. So of course on mine, I had a smaller section for a to-do list and then a section for a doodle. Into my fifth journal, we had another one page weekly because I used this page over here for memory keeping. Into my sixth bullet journal, again, we had the events list and the running to-do list. And then another style of the same, so events and to-do list. In this one, I instead split the page up into eight boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one of those was used for notes rather than for a day of the week. And then of course, in my current bullet journal, we have my most recent one page weeklies, which was this week and this week. 
So in the one on this side, we just had a box for each day of the week, some doodle boxes, and also a space for notes, and a mini calendar. And in this one, I instead combined some of those boxes to make a long running to-do list, which quite obviously got used. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Back into the R&D Bujo. So when I set up this page on Thursday, I talked about the idea that I considered this to be a two column weekly. So you've essentially split your page into half and you have a column here and a column there. And this one was a three page weekly. So the page into thirds, columns one, two, and three. I'm going to be following along with that idea for the weeklies I'm setting up in here. So we're going to look at two examples of each of one column weeklies, two column weeklies, and three column weeklies. For a total of six layouts. Before we jump in, just a reminder that any of the equipment I use in today's setups is linked in the description box below. Starting with our one column weeklies, you'll notice that on these pages and the ones that follow, I have some rough pencil lines drawn in. This was mainly so I could see where each section needed to go, rather than fully sketching out each layout. I always like to have some general scaffolding in there, so I don't overshoot my lines or something similar. For each of the different number of columns, so one, two, and three columns, as I mentioned, I'll be drawing up two examples. One will have space for each day of the week, and the other will have the weekend combined. Of course, needing either six or seven spaces for the daily checklists, will change up the spacing you'll be using, which is why I wanted to give examples of both here, but also why I needed those pencil lines. When I set up these pages, I tried to use a variation in the styles of headers, whether I had ruled or freehanded the boxes, and other little changes. For these layouts, I'm really just hoping to show you some general layout arrangements, and I want to encourage you guys to change things up and make these your own. Using different styles of lettering, or do or don't have borders, or use different colours and line styles. You could include decoration and washi tape if you wanted to. The idea here is really just to get you to see, in general, how can we lay out the page to fit an entire week on there. From first touch of the pen to lining my journal back up in frame for the video, all of these layouts together took just under 50 minutes. That's not to say that they all took the same amount of time though. So in order, layout one took about five and a half minutes. Layout two took seven minutes. Layout three took six minutes. Layout four took just over six. So like six minutes, 10 seconds. Layout five took 10 and a half minutes, given all the line rolling on that one. And layout six took about the same given the decorative element. Those times won't necessarily add up to 50, because obviously I line my journal back up in shot between each of them. And every so often I'll give myself a break to stretch my hand or something like that. Remember that those times also include me thinking about what the heck I'm going to put on the page, because I didn't have any preconceived idea of what these layouts were going to look like. Though that time also doesn't include the time taken to count the spacing for the pencil sketches. I only mention this because when I did my 5 minute weekly layouts video, people had some things to say about whether the layouts would really take 5 minutes. I like to be honest with you guys and about how long these layouts actually take me, which can be hard to judge with sped up footage. I can say with confidence though, each of these layouts took less than 12 minutes per layout. For each of these layouts, I've tried to keep them to a kind of grid arrangement, where each space on the grid is the same size. Of course, there are plenty of one-page layouts where you can have different sizes for each day of the week, which can also allow space for trackers and other sections. On some of these layouts, depending on the space available, I have also included mini trackers and meal logs and that kind of stuff. If those trackers don't suit you, use the space for something else. Do a different type of tracker, or a note section, or decoration, or journaling, or something like that. Make these spreads work for you. On that note though, I'd love to know which of these layouts you'd be most likely to use. Or, if you wouldn't use any of them, what's missing from these that would make it hard for you to use them? I know for me personally that these layouts would be tricky for me as they are, because they don't have space for a running to-do list, which I quite like to have. But for some weeks I don't need that, and of course, for the layouts that have the mini trackers that I wouldn't use, I could make those a space for a running to-do list. Let me know what you guys think though. 
If you wanted to expand that a bit, which of the layouts that I showed you in the flip through section would you guys be most likely to use? Obviously, I used all of them to varying extents. <laughs> For the layouts I've drawn here though, if I was to use them as they are, my preference would probably be for the two or three column weekly that has a space for each day of the week, rather than the weekend combined. Because this kind of better suits the way that I like to journal. Hopefully these layouts will be helpful to you guys, and thank you to everybody who showed interest in seeing a video on this. As always, if you guys have anything else you want to see from me, please do let me know. I want to make sure I'm putting out content that you guys are actually interested in. There we go, so we have the one column weeklies, the two column weeklies, and the three column weeklies. As I said, all of these are just ideas of how you could lay the page out. In terms of the added decoration and the different styles of lettering, that is completely up to you. Changing up those things can make your layouts feel fresh and new and yours. Thank you for watching team. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanted to see more from me, feel free to go check out one of my other videos. Until next time, bye.